Welcome to this series of machine learning webinars. My name is Anne Huyck and this is the last webinar in a series of five conducted by Paul de Groot, Hadip Yaglan and myself, all of DGB Earth Sciences. The first webinar presented by Paul de Groot introduced the theory of machine learning and neural networks. The second webinar, also presented by Paul de Groot, gave a more detailed introduction on deep learning and other new algorithms. It was followed up by a first webinar by Hardy Piglan on seismic applications, log applications and seismic to log applications. The fourth webinar showed how to synthesize training data with Syntroc in order to use it to train machine learning models. This webinar will present us the link between the OpenDetect machine learning plugin and Python, and especially how to create and add new models within this new machine learning platform. First, I'll be presenting the link between OpenDetect and Python, how to install OpenDetect, the machine learning plugin, and the Python environment using the OpenDetect installer. I'll briefly show how the link can be set up and customized before giving given a global overview of the machine learning application. In a second part, I'll present the two Python packages that have been written by DGB R Sciences, ODPy and DGBPy. Finally, I'll show example Python scripts that utilize these modules in a research mode. Let me start by presenting the link between OpenDetect and Python that will be part of the new major release 660 of OpenDetect. In this slide, you can recognize the OpenDetect installation manager with a slightly modified user interface. To facilitate using Python with OpenDetect, it will be possible to install a Miniconda 3 installation with virtual environments set up to run the machine learning plugin's workflow. A default environment will allow the workflow to run on as much modern machines as possible, although sometimes slowly depending on the workflow. A GPU-enabled environment will also be provided to take full advantage of the GPU processing capabilities of the Python package TensorFlow. The link with OpenDetect and Python can be set up and customized through a dedicated settings dialog in the OpenDetect utilities menu. It will point to the Python packages installed using the installation manager by default, if they have been installed. This dialog contains a testing tool and allows launching a console window with the selected environment activated. Such window can be launched anywhere in OpenDetect with the short key control T. For the users who have installed their own Python at system level or which are using a distribution of Python such as Anaconda, the Python settings can be altered to have OpenDetect use it directly, instead of the Python distribution provided with OpenDetect. Please refer to the documentation to ensure that such external environment contains all packages required by the OpenDetect machine learning plugin. Finally, this dialog will be further extended to allow the user to provide the location of its Python source code such that it becomes accessible to extend the capabilities of the machine learning plugin by adding new custom models to train on. Until now, OpenDetect was very much a standalone application containing all required tools to run seismic interpretation workflows. It must be realized that one cannot set up a link to Python without switching to a multi-application ecosystem. While OpenDetect remains the focal point for viewing the data and managing the database, the machine learning plugin is a dedicated and separated application which is the starting point for all machine learning workflows. It integrates and displays the output of a Bokeh application, which is a Python user interface embedded inside the machine learning user interface. The Bokeh app offer, offers a modern mechanism for selecting the model parameters pulled out directly from their Python classes. While training or predictions are done, Python scripts are running as daemons to run the Python code and interact with the machine learning plugin application. 
Finally, the Python TensorBoard application is utilized to monitor the training progress for TensorFlow models and its output is rendered in a web browser. I will now present briefly the packages ODPy and DGBPy that have been written for the machine learning plugin. The ODPy package is mainly used to provide necessary logging tools and integrate with the OpenDetect application and database. It also contains an extension of the H5Py module, which makes it easier to read and write HDF5 attributes. The DGBPy DGB package contains three main modules. MLApply is the direct access for any training or prediction workflow. MLIO is the access point for reading the example files created by the OpenDetect machine learning workflow. HDF5 contains the implementations for reading the example and model files. TGB Keras contains the Keras training parameters and default models. UR Keras contains the user interface for the Bokeh application for the Keras models. Where Keras classes contains the implementation of a Keras sequence class that provides training and validation data for training purposes. DGB Scikit contains the DGB Scik the scikit-learn training parameters and default models. Whereas UI SQLearn contains the user, user interface for the Bokeh application for scikit-learn models. I'll now show you some examples of data extracted prior to the training before showing examples of simple scripts that rely on the two packages ODPy and DGBPy. The two, two main NumPy arrays are always extracted regardless of the workflow X data and Y data. Some compartmentalization is added to allow retrieving the data only for a logical subset of the whole dataset per wells, per pixels, per 2D lines. I'll now start OpenDetect and show you how such example files can be read in Python. After starting the OpenDetect application, one can launch the machine learning plugin by using the dedicated icon in the DGB plugins toolbar. Then I can get an activated console window by uh, with the short key by using the short key control T and you can note that it takes Python some time to activate the Python environment. From this console window I can launch my preferred IDE uh, in this case it will be spider using the corresponding executable. Then the first script um, that I'll present will show how to retrieve information on the example files with the DGBPI MLIO get info function. This function returns a dictionary which will be filled with the various information with various information on the example files. So if I uh, browse to this uh, start script, this very f uh, simple SAR script, I have to provide a file pass is which is the file created by OpenDetect when you extract uh, data for any workflow and thereafter all I have to do is call the get info function on these files to get a dictionary. Now this dictionary I can uh, display with the uh, variable browser here in spider and it will show me basically what kind of workflow I'm looking at, uh, the input uh, shape of the extracted data, the output shape of the extracted data. Uh, if we are running a classification like for a pick set classification workflow, I'll have also a full list of the classes to be predicted and also the class names uh, to be predicted as uh, defined during the extraction uh, data extraction part. I also see again the image shape, in that case will be different, it will be a tiny cubelet. Output shape is one because we are only predicting a single uh, class code at the time. And for Wells, it's about the same story. This is a, a supervised uh, lithologic prediction, so I have the litho codes to be predicted 
uh, the output log name uh, which is supposed to be uh, predicted and uh, workflow and more information on the uh, survey for which in which the data has been extracted and so on. Once we have this uh, kind of header file information we can also see how we can pull out models, default models from the DGBPy module. So this is achieved uh, in, in this case with the uh, DGB Keras module and I'll be using the get default model function which takes as input the dictionary we've extracted before which I'm extracting in the very same way and I am telling the system I want to uh, get a LUNET uh, model for this uh, information for this kind of example file. So that will allow uh, the input uh, information on the cubelet size, the image size and the number of input attributes to directly be retrieved from the dictionary into uh, the get default model function. Uh, once this is uh, done, once the model is uh, created, we can use the summary function from uh, the Keras models to print an overview of uh, the various uh, the topology of these various modules. So if I go back to the start, uh, so to this uh, Pixet model, I can see that it consists on a number of convolutional layers, activation layers, dropouts until a dense layer at the end which uh, has for number of nodes the number of classes to be predicted in that case uh, in that case nine then if we go to another example for a log log prediction example it will be a more simple model because um, everything is 1d and uh, it all comes down to a single uh, activation layer uh, with the four histology codes. Finally, for the example image example, I can see here the image size, 128 by 256 uh, pixels, and uh, one input uh, attribute image. But I can use in OpenLaTeX. I can extract and use more than one attribute uh, to provide channels for the images to be trained on. Eventually, the output image has the same size as the input and again uh, one single output attribute. It is also possible to get in a more direct way a default net model or unit model but directly providing a, a boolean to uh, let the system know if we are running a classification or a continuous property prediction providing the shape of the uh, input uh, data and the number of attributes to be used number of output attributes. Um, so this is uh, getting these default models. Once we have uh, the data, well the header information on data and the default model, we can try to seek for the data itself. And there are two ways to do that. Um, if we want to get all of the data in one of these example files, then we can use the get training data function of the MLIO module. Um, so that is uh, what I'm just going to run now. It's already done. And it returns a data pack which contains the same dictionary as before with all the information inside it, but it also contains the, uh, the two NumPy arrays that uh, you have seen on my previous slide. One for the uh, input to the model, one for the output to the model, so that's the quantity to be predicted. You recognize the image uh, dimensions, the number of input attributes, the number of output attributes and the 70 here is the number of images which are uh, present in that file. So in that this case I have 70 images, 70 2D images in a file. If I have, uh, if I'm looking at the Pixet classification example, I have uh, 1300 uh, cubelets with a dimension 17 by 17 by 33 uh, pixels and one input seismic uh, attribute. When it comes, when if we look at the same data for the wells, we have a very large number of data points, which is uh, often the case uh, 
because we are 1D, 5 input logs, 1 output log to be predicted. Now, uh, while this uh, is a quick and easy way to retrieve the data, when we actually do training, we'll uh, effectively switch to a different function, which is the get scaled training data function from the ML apply module. This one, unlike the previous one, will split the data into two parts, one part which will be made ready for training the model and one part which will be left for the validation of the uh, training accuracy. Again, it's based directly on the uh, file name where uh, the example data is stored. And then if, I, if I'm looking now at the uh, output uh, to of the get scaled training data function. It's again the same dictionary, but the X data has been split randomly into an train, uh, an X train numpy array and an X validate numpy array with the same image dimensions as before and a random split of these 70 images according to this ratio to this fraction uh, between 56 images for training, 14 for validation same for the output of the uh, model. A second large difference with the previous function is that the amplitude of the two uh, NumPy arrays for training and validation, the X arrays, they are going to be normalized to an RMS value of 1 in order to allow me to uh, apply in a safe way this model after it has been trained um, either in a survey across data sets which don't have the same scale or across different surveys. So we'll always have a normalized uh, input being presented to the, uh, to the model. Once we have the data, we are now uh, running uh, we in a position where we can run the training. That can be done in, in different ways. The most direct way from uh, far to train your data, if you want to train it inside certain IDE, is to use the do train function of the ML apply package, with again as only input to this function the example file name and as only output uh, the, the base file name of the uh, file in which we'll store the resulting model. So the training will start uh, reading the data, will split the data between training and uh, validation, will run all the epochs of the uh, training, so in that case 15 epochs until we have reached a, uh, a good uh, training accuracy. So you see that the accuracy increases with the number of epochs and eventually it will save the model with that base file name. Um, and there we'll see a huge advantage of using Spider and our terminal in a, in a way that they have been set up automatically by uh, OpenDetect is that this entire ecosystem is aware of um, the OpenDetect database and the OpenDetect application as well and actually the model which has been saved has directly been saved in the uh, NLA folder of my current survey right now and uh, I can furthermore go into uh, the uh, machine learning control center open the corresponding workflow so this is was a seismic bodies workflow and I, if I look down on my list of stored models I can see the model which has just been saved um, as a result of being trained in a spider and it is completely ready to be applied in order to run that prediction on uh, on my data set on any data set of that survey either on single inline single cross line on and and so on now if you want to go to go uh, further into this so far this is just replicating what would happen if you would use the train tab in the machine learning plugin. Now if you have your own Python repository and uh, an unit model 
uh, I would assume you, you would have some kind of code looking like this. Like uh, these are the examples you can find very easily in the web and um, where you basically define your model for a given size by adding all the layers which are supposed to compose the convolutional model and uh, eventually you'll be providing also the optimizer function to, to be used, the loss function to be used and how you want the accuracy uh, to be uh, monitored. So in this code you have the entire freedom to define the model as you want it, to change the parameters as you want it. And um, I'll now let you see how such a uh, model can be integrated in the environment. So in order to integrate that into our training workflow, we'll have to write a script such as this one, where we import the required uh, items from the DGBPy package, but I'm also gonna import the function, the module which I wrote myself externally, so which is not provided by OpenDetect. Now, once this, uh, this is all imported, I'll get uh, the input data pack again with the get scaled training data function from which I can get the input shape of uh, corresponding to this data set, the number of input attributes of this data set. I'll pull out the model by calling the required function of, the, uh, of this of my own module. I can get the default uh, training dictionary, uh, the default training parameters from the DGB Keras module, which I can use to customize and run a number of epochs or a given batch size before that is given to the trained function. So if I run this now, I'm going to run this uh, training with my custom model as defined externally. And well, the training will basically uh, be working just like in the previous example with the do train function for up to uh, the required number of epochs and thereafter I'll take care of writing this to the OpenDetect database by uh, using these functions of the MLIO uh, module of DGBPy. And in the same way as before, if I look in the NLA folder of my survey I've just been able to uh, write this uh, model trained on data extracted from OpenDetect but using a, an external model in such a way that again if I go back uh, into the OpenDetect machine learning control center I open the corresponding workflow so that's an image to image uh, workflow I can find the model trained right now just ready to be applied uh, on the data. So to summarize uh, this presentation, we've built an entire ecosystem of Python applications and modules which has been enabled around the OpenDetect machine learning plugin. The plugin extracts data from the OpenDetect database into the widely uh, supported open source HDF5 format data container. This container associated with the standard Python modules NumPy and H5Py and complemented by the DGB modules ODPy and DGBPy allows quick and easy retrieval of the training data in any Python code. Furthermore, the machine learning plugin built-in models and parameters can easily be retrieved. An appropriately equipped machine learning Python environment to develop and train new models new models can be installed using the OpenDetect installer. Plenty of model architectures are available online and can be edited in a dedicated Python environment such as Spider or Eider. This presentation showed how a custom model architecture can be extracted with the machine learning plugin by running just few lines of code in the Spider Python IDE. The trained model can be saved into the OpenDetect database and subsequently applied from the OpenDetect apply or prediction user interface. Eventually it will be possible to train a custom model written in an external module directly from the OpenDetect training user interface. 
Do you have any questions?